good to it. What the f This is the Core i9 11900K. Actually, that's a lie. This is a $5 Z on that I bought off eBay. This is the media kit for the Core i9 11900K. Intel's highest performing 11th gen CPU with eight core 16 threads and a max boost up to a whopping 5.3 gigahertz. This PCIe Gen 4 compatible CPU is known to put out quite a bit of heat. So in this video, we're going to figure out what type of cooling you need to actually tame this 11th gen beast. And to do that, we've got a battle against some of the best CPU coolers in their respective categories. So let's go through them. First up, we have the Intel Thermal Solution overrepresenting a stock cooler. This is essentially a stock cooler on energy drink. I don't really want to say that's a stock cooler on steroids because that's unfair to steroids. This thing is still puny, it's still pathetic. And it's our stock cooler. It's not really a stock cooler. Anyway, next up for our low profile CPU coolers, we have the Alpen Fond Black Ridge. This thing is an absolute beast for its size. And it's gonna take our place for the high performance, low profile CPU coolers. And next in comes the mini towers. We have the Noctua MHU9S. This thing is known to be the best for its size. If you have a bit more headroom to play with, this is kind of the cooler that you go for. Up next, we have the Noctua NH-U12S. This is a slim 120 millimeter tower, one of the most popular categories in this lineup. And this is one of the best coolers within that category, as well as being very stealthy, very good looking. And our final category is the closed loop 240 millimeter liquid cooler for which we have the Corsair H100i Platinum. So that's going to cover most of the categories of CPU coolers that there are in the market, but if your cooler isn't in this list or the category that you're using isn't, you'll be able to cross-reference yours between what we're testing today to figure out how well it will perform with the 11900K. So before we start, a big thank you to ASRock for sponsoring this video. They sent over the 11900K media kit and also the Z590 Extreme Wi-Fi 6 motherboard. A board that I really like because of Wi-Fi 6, dual ethernet, as well as 2.5 gigabit ethernet on one of the ports a very cleverly integrated GPU anti-sag bracket, and also a 14 phase 50 amp power stage VRM solution that's going to be more than powerful enough for our 11900K. So thank you to ASRock for sponsoring this video. Go show them some love in the video description. I'll have some of my favorite products of theirs down there. But otherwise, let's see if we can tame this 11900K beast with an Intel stock cooler that's had an energy drink and some other coolers too. Let's get into this. So firstly, we're going to go over the rig and the settings used before we then talk about our testing, how we're going to pass or fail each of these coolers based on thermals. Then we get to test each of these coolers, see which ones are worthy, which ones are not based on those parameters. So first things first, let's go over our test system, which of course is the 11900K and the ASRock Z590 Extreme Wi-Fi 6 motherboard. And each of the coolers will be using an IC graphite pad for consistency. So bear that in mind if you have a high performance pace, you can minus a couple degrees off the upcoming results. Our memory is a Corsair Vengeance LP3600 CL18, mainly for the sake of cooler compatibility. Delivering the power is a 1000 watt C-Sonic Focus Gold. And our GPU is the GTX 1660 Super to offload the graphics from the CPU. How most people would be running this chip and of course everything will be linked in the video description for you. But one of the most important things that we need to cover is actually the settings as this will cause the biggest variance between my results, your results and a different video that you're watching. So into the BIOS we go. I'm actually going to be leaving nearly everything in here completely stock as the vast majority of users will too. So this test will be more relevant to the most amount of people. But also bear in mind that your motherboard manufacturer may set up their default BIOS differently. So this is why I'm showing you the CPU configuration info to compare against. The only thing that I am changing is enabling XMP because if you specifically pay for memory faster than 2400 megahertz and don't enable it, congratulations, you wasted money. So to really test these coolers, we're going to be running a standard data set settings 30 minute run of OCCT version 8.2.0 for each of these coolers. This is an AVX 512 workload, so it should be pretty demanding. And to keep it as fair as possible, we're going to be using a linear fan curve from 0C, 0% fan speed, all the way up to 100C, 100% fan speed. Well, 99C, 100% fan speed for the sake of software. But the point is that all of this is going to be consistent between the tests. We will talk about clock speed, but we are primarily testing thermals here. And we're testing at three different sections, at idle, during its turbo boost, and throughout the entire duration of the test. But if at any point during the test, the CPU triggers a thermal throttle flag, that's it. That CPU cooler is done and it is deemed unworthy for the 11900K. So let's start with 
our Intel Thermal solution. With a fin density of derp and a cooling capacity of wishful thinking, it performs exactly as you would expect it would. Although its idle temperature was just under 37 degrees, which is actually pretty excellent, and it did turbo boost all the way up to nearly 4.8 gigahertz. At 40 seconds in, it hit 100 degrees centigrade and was immediately disqualified for triggering a thermal throttle flag. So moving on to the Alpenform Black Ridge. I had really high hopes for this cooler. It's basically best in class. Six heat pipes, downfire cooler, but in its stock configuration, it was not able to tame the 11900K. Let me show you. The Black Ridge cooler started out with an idle temperature at just under 34 degrees C, which is highly commendable. But once we put a load onto it, it did turbo up to 4.8 gigahertz, which is great, but it did so with a lot of heat. Just like the Intel Thermal Solution, at 40 seconds, it hit 100 degrees C and triggered a thermal throttle flag. Therefore, it was immediately disqualified. Sorry, little guy. I had bigger hopes for you. Next up, we have the Notua NHU9S. Is this going to be good enough to at least complete a run with the 11900K? And it turns out, it is. Starting out with an idle temp of 32.76 degrees C. When we put it under load, like the others, it turboed up to almost 4.8 gigahertz. But what it didn't do was thermal throttle. It maxed out at 85 degrees C, but with an average temperature of 74.1 degrees C during the entirety of the turbo boost. And when it comes to the entire length of the test, the average temperature was just under 70 degrees C, which is actually very good, and allowed us to sustain a clock of just over 4.1 gigahertz. That is not bad for a mini tower, so well done, Notua. Next up, we have the Notua NHU12S, and this performed really quite well. This is a really good go-to CPU cooler. At idle, it ran at 31.2 degrees, and when we put it under load, it only actually maxed out at 82 degrees C during the turbo boost period, for which it too sustained a clock at just under 4.8 gigahertz. And during the turbo boost period, the average temperature was just over 72 and a half degrees C, which is actually very respectable. Then when it settled in for the entirety of the run, its average temperature leveled out at just over 62 degrees C, giving us an average clock of just over 4.3 gigahertz for the entire run. It is no wonder why this cooler is so popular. Last but not least, the H100i Platinum. If the last two coolers pass the test, this one surely will too, right? And that is correct. With an idle temperature of just over 27 and a half degrees C, it ended up maxing out during the turbo boost at 73 degrees C. That is quite impressive. This too gave us an average clock of just shy of 4.8 gigahertz and an average temperature just shy of 65 and a half degrees C during the turbo boost period. And when it settled in for the entirety of the run, we saw an average temperature of just over 55 and a half degrees C, which is actually quite a comfortable result if you're looking to use a 240 millimeter liquid cooler with an 11900K. So now I think it's time to summarize the results. What have we learned? What have we covered? So, in conclusion, don't try and use an Intel stock cooler on an 11900K. Even if that stock cooler isn't actually a stock cooler and it's quite a bit more powerful, it just wasn't designed to take that much heat away from a chip as powerful as the 11900K. But the thing that was a bit more of a disappointment than that, which we all kind of knew to begin with, was the Black Ridge in its stock configuration. It does have four configurations in total, so you might be able to cool the 11900K with a different configuration. But as standard, with a 92mm on the underside, it just wasn't powerful enough to take that much heat away and just isn't good enough to cool the 11900K in its stock configuration as well as the Intel Thermal Solution it too thermal throttled which is about as big a fail as you have in this test and doesn't bode well for other downfire coolers so what it looks like the minimum level of cooling for the 11900K with settings unchanged configured as I showed you before seems to be somewhere between a downfire cooler such as the Black Ridge, and the Notua NHU9S, a mini tower. As the Notua NHU9S really didn't have an issue cooling our 11900K, but if you went for something even beefier, say a slim tower, a dual tower, or a closed loop cooler, you would see even bigger benefits as shown in our testing. The bigger the cooler, the higher the clocks. The higher the clocks, the greater the performance. So check out all the products used in the video description. And while you're down there, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to dive deeper into the topic. We could try undervolting, maybe different tests, etc. Let me know where you want me to go with this. But get subscribed, turn on notifications, make sure that you don't miss upcoming TechLens videos. Otherwise, guys, like is always appreciated. I'll see you in the next one.